Hey guys, it's Chad from the Teach Better team, and tonight on Mastery Chat, we were actually talking about teams, but ironically, I'm by myself, which is kind of weird, but that's okay. It was an absolutely awesome chat. We had um, an amazing moderator, Hamilton Parks, who was talking about effective teams and collaboration. I absolutely love this topic because I feel like everyone was able to kind of chime in. Adam, how's it going? Um, everyone was able to kind of chime in from wherever they're at. So some people were talking about administrative teams or PLNs. Some people were talking about like teams or action teams they were at in their school. But regardless, there was a lot of really common threads. So one of my favorite questions from tonight was, um, you know, what are some of the most effective ways that you communicate with your team? And I, I think this is really, really important because I think communication is one of the most important aspects of, of any team. And one of my favorite things that I heard was just like having lunch on a regular basis with people in like this informal setting. I can't remember who said it, but it was one of my favorite responses because sometimes connecting on a human level with your team will make you connect better on a professional level. Um, Adam, thank you so much. He says that the Teach Better team is the best educational support team there is. That means so much. I'm so glad that uh, we mean so much to you, Adam, and we love having you as part um, of our team. So that's absolutely fantastic. Um, in terms of tools, I also saw a bunch of tools. I saw a lot of uh, Slack is a really cool, cool communication tool. A lot of teams use Google. Um, things like that to collaborate. There were a lot of really great tools that were shared. And then another thing that I really liked is talking about someone joining your team. We've actually experienced this here on the Teach Better team a ton. And that is when someone comes in, one thing we like to do is ask them what their vision or their role or their strengths are. One of the worst things you can do is put someone in a position that makes them either unhappy or isn't suited to their strengths. A lot of times we rush to be, to be efficient by kind of slapping a title on someone and saying, do this right now. But if you actually just let them settle in, find their strengths, you can actually get a lot more out of your team. And then you get the right people in the right places. I see Jeff Gargas just joined. How you doing, buddy? He actually just drive from where I'm at, Illinois, home. So he was has been in the car for like eight hours and just joined this chat. So like I'm pretty excited about that. By the way, I am in Illinois. I had an awesome presentation today at Freeport School District, and tomorrow I'm going to be at Stark County Schools. I'm basically circumnavigating the entire state of Illinois this week, and then I'm heading home, and then I'm off to, I think, Connecticut next week. So it's been really crazy. And I can tell you right now, even though I'm traveling and doing all this crazy stuff, I don't really worry about the Teach Better team doing all the amazing things that we do because we have an amazing team. And that's another thing I want to talk to you. If you can't trust your team to do what they need to do, then you probably don't have a great team. One thing that I love about our team personally and that I think that the best teams have is I don't actually have to worry about Ray being awesome because I know Ray's awesome. I don't have to worry about Jeff being awesome because I know Jeff's awesome. He's actually so um, I know that my team is going to do what they need to do. And so when I don't have to worry about that, I can perform and execute what I need to more effectively. I think it's when people over delegate and like try to, to give tasks that don't see, suit people's strengths. I think that's when you see a lot of issues. And I think a lot of that came through in tonight's chat. So I do want to give a shout out to our amazing team. There, it, it's grown so much in the last um, year, but the Teach Better team is, is amazing. And, and without them um, and all of our team members, I don't know where we would be. And one thing we've said from the beginning is that every single person watching this, every single person that participates in Mastery Chat or has taken a course or has taken a training or has trusted us in any way, shape, or form is part of our team too. So your team just doesn't have to be the people that sit down and make decisions. Your team is your network, your support system. It doesn't have to be a formal thing all the time. Sometimes your team is, <laughs> Jeff Kaplan, you are also one of my favorite members of the Teach Better team, just so you know. So let's say both Jeffs for right now. But Jeff Kaplan, you're pretty awesome, just so you know. Um, 
So it was absolutely um, an amazing, amazing chat tonight. I had a great time. Um, I think one of my other favorite questions tonight, and in kind of the one I'm going to end with, is like, what would what would be your advice for underperforming teams? And um, one of the most common things I see when working with schools and districts is when teams don't have a common goal or mission and they meet just to meet for no reason. If, if you're a teacher watching this right now, you've probably been in a meeting that you didn't have to be in, right? Um, Jeff and I often talk about a rule where like, if it can be sent in an email, it should be an email, not a meeting, right? Um, and a lot of times we end up wasting a lot of time in meetings that don't actually need to happen. So only invite people that need to be in the meeting so you're not wasting people's time. Keep it short, sweet, simple. Have a targeted agenda for the meeting. I can't tell you how many times, and, and this is a really common, I'm at meetings or I'm, I'm in a meeting or, or with a group of teachers in a meeting, and they just start parking lot discussions or they start talking about you know, X, Y, or Z, and then 45 minutes goes by and nothing gets accomplished, right? So um, the other thing for underperforming teams, come prepared to either do the work that needs to get done in the meeting or get the work done at the meeting, right? So you need to decide really quickly, is this a work meeting? Are we getting X, Y, Z done? Or are we making decisions so that things can be assigned or executed later? So starting with a plan, executing the plan and then being efficient with your time it's going to make meetings much better and it's going to make meetings and teamwork much more collaborative so a lot of great, um veronica great to see you glad to see you here casey haven't seen you in a while hope you're doing well my friends um but yeah no it was a great chat so i'd love to hear from you guys as well if you're watching leave a comment what makes your team awesome what does your team do really well or what advice or thing do you do really well in your team that other people should also do i'm gonna give you guys a couple minutes and while you guys are typing and giving me your comments or hopefully hearts or likes um we can uh, uh we can talk about one more thing that's really important for teams and that is if someone doesn't want to be part of your team, they shouldn't be part of your team. One of the most important things about teams is that everyone has a purpose, sees the vision, and sees the mission. And just because someone doesn't see the mission doesn't make them bad or good or other, but it's going to be detrimental to the support and success of the team. So you want to make sure everyone believes in the mission and the core values and the norms of the team. One of the greatest things I saw... Um, that's something that really shined through in tonight's chat that I kind of want to wrap things up around. And that is every team, every meeting, every mission has to have a common vision for what the goal is. So maybe that goal is do what's best for kids or always be okay leaving things on the table or disagreeing. Um, I've been to a lot of meetings where teams never disagree so nothing ever gets done. Or the first person that talks gets their idea chosen. Some of the best teams... Um, I'm part of or have been part of or have seen disagree all the time. That doesn't mean you're a bad team. That means that you, as long as you have a common goal, disagreeing, sometimes getting a little bit angry, sometimes shouting, could be the best thing possible. Because at the end, if both of you or all of you are trying to reach the same goal as in terms of what's best for kids, you can get there through that dissension. Because if each of you is fighting for the same goal, but coming at it from a different angle, chances are when you get to the end of that conversation or the end of that disagreement, you're going to be better for it. I know, and I'm going to be honest with you right now, a little bit behind the curtain, that happens on the Teach Better team all the time. Actually, there's a funny story. Jeff and I were arguing one time. And I think it might have been Ray. Um, she was like, oh, you guys should stop arguing. And Jeff and I told Ray, well, you have to let us, this was really early on. I said, you have to let us argue because when we argue and we have the same goal, we come to a better solution than either of us could have figured out on our own. And that's something we've embodied on the Teach Better team. We love arguments and disagreements because when we get out on the other side, a huge, huge benefit. Um, so Jeff Kaplan just brought a, a really great point. He says, at the teacher level, we're given our team Sometimes that is difficult, but not impossible. So, so Jeff, thank you for bringing that up. Um, 
I, I love the fact that you said that. And um, so when so when you are given a team that you don't choose, it becomes absolutely vital that you set a mission and vision that everyone can agree on. Because if you can't handpick your team, which teachers teachers don't get to, that's when setting those norms, setting those expectations, setting that mission and that vision and keeping to those tight agendas and targeted agendas for what you want to get done in each meeting becomes very, very, very important. So Jeff, that's an absolutely amazing point, especially for educators, because we've all been on a team with either people we definitely don't agree with or we feel like have a different philosophy. But if you dig deep enough, you can usually figure out what is the common goal and what is the purpose. So <laughs> Veronica, Veronica says, I'm so wise. I, I truly appreciate that, Veronica. Thank you so much. Um, you're pretty amazing too, Veronica, whether you know it or not. And you have a pretty great team there down in Cincinnati, uh, Great Oaks area. So um, you guys do a great job down there. And I also just found out I'm going to be visiting you soon. Well, not soon, but in a couple months. So I'm going to be coming back. So we're going to get to hang out soon, Veronica. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, so, yeah, teams are amazing. They can be great supports, but if they're run inefficiently, they, they don't get a lot done. So make sure whatever team you're on, whether it's a, a school team, whether it's a sports team, whether it's whether it's a professional um, PLN or a district level team, make sure you're all rowing in the same direction. Um, so I, Jeff Kaplan just said, disagreements are so important and valuable to building a team. I a thousand percent agree. Uh, one of my favorite people, Jeff Kaplan, is just on it tonight, a hundred percent, absolutely correct disagreements should happen on your team. If they don't, something is broken, something is wrong. Or it means that someone's controlling the entire conversation so that no actual collaboration occurs. And we actually see that with students all the time. One of the funniest things um, I'm gonna end with is an observation that I have, and that most of the time when I talk to teachers about collaboration, they go, I love doing collaboration, but my students are always off task. And then I go to that same teacher's meeting with other teachers and they exhibit the exact same behavior that their students exhibit, whether it's being off task or not being focused or having parking lot conversations that aren't on task. So I want you to be reflective next time you're in a meeting and, and think about how can we model good teamwork and good collaboration with our peers so that when students see that, they then model that same thing in the classroom. So I know we talked a lot about adult collaboration, but when students collaborate, they need a model to show. So something that um, we were very mindful of when I was in the classroom was modeling our discussions and being helpful with one another so that students would also model that back. Because if they see disagreements, if they see arguments all the time um, that are like um, vicious or, or, or not in the best, uh, mindset, um, they're going to model that. So we model best practices for our students. Maggie, you are right on point. Disagreements must be respectful and not turn mean. Yes, yes, yes. So Maggie just had an amazing point that I want to bring up. Um, <laughs> Veronica, teachers make terrible students. Sadly, that sometime is true. Um, so Maggie Gifford just said, disagreements must be respectful and not turn mean. That's where the team must be intentional and build rapport and respect amongst members. So this is a fantastic, fantastic statement. Maggie, you are like rocking it tonight with that statement. And I kind of want to just like end with that because it's so amazing. And that is that um, if you're okay with this agreement, so there's something that um, with the members of the Teach Better team, and I'm gonna like be honest with you, we argue all the time but it's never out of anger. And I'm not saying we don't get frustrated or really um, passionate about our view or our point, because we need that. I need people smarter than me in the room so that we can argue and come to the best solution possible. That's what makes teams powerful. That's what makes teams effective, is disagreements in those combative competitions of ideas so to find out what's best for kids or teachers or schools or districts at the end of the day. But. 
I can wholeheartedly say any time I've ever gotten into a quote-unquote disagreement with another member of the Teach by the team, I'm never angry. And the reason is because I know that both of us want what's best for the team. Both of us wants what's best for the outcome or the school or the student or the district that we're talking about. So that is I want all of you guys to take that. Um, not holding grudges against your team like Adam just said in the comments. Um, be respectful. Be okay with disagreements. And all everyone needs to just be like, okay, can we all agree that we want what's best for students? And as long as we're arguing for what we think is best for students, it's okay. And that's kind of like a great place to start in any team meeting in a, in a school that you can possibly think of. You guys have been amazing tonight. Thank you so much for participating in this post chat. It was absolutely awesome. I'm sorry that we couldn't have another guest. You guys were stuck with me by myself. Hopefully that's okay with you. Um, Hamilton Parks did an amazing job. If you want to follow him, um, he I'm going to put his uh, Twitter handle here. I'm going to type it, Hamilton Park 17. Uh, I'm going to put that right here. Um, uh, if you want to follow Hamilton Parks, uh, that's his. Uh, he did a great job moderating the chat tonight. I hope you guys have an amazing night. Thank you so much. Stay awesome. And always teach better. Have a good one, guys.